阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛。Good、uh, evening, everyone from Australia.、Uh, thank you for coming for uh, uh, our Taizang Gaiyin Pian, the Treatise on Response and Retribution after almost a, a month break.、Um, still not recovering from the holiday,、uh, but it's much better than last week. So thank you for giving me one week break,、uh, Auntie. So I think this is a good time to come back.、Um, Just trying to do this、uh, section three crimes and offenses as usual.、Uh, we have already been through a lot, as you can see.、Um, beautiful three,、uh, five parts. Talk about、uh, many topics,、um, and which I hope might help、uh, any one of us to get through、uh, any sort of、um, troubles. Sometimes you know we never know until we heard of it,、uh, and it's very important for us to keep、um, how to say keep. Keep you know immersed in the teaching. Otherwise, we will lose a sight of it, and we might you know end up committing one of those transgression without knowing that it is、uh, going to cause、uh, very much、uh, cause suffering to us because of our actions.、Um, before we go in in depth, apologies. I haven't fully translated the Chinese word. This week's the transgression is uh, 刚强是呃 So in this context. The、um, previous one is deceitful. In Chinese literal translation, is you know uh, very uh, how to say behind the scene. In this session, we are talking about those transgressions that are in your face. They are just they are rude, blatantly rude. And this this one is actually the trans. I haven't find the actual English word to it, but、um, part six. We are six. There are sixteen part by the way under the section three. Uh, for Tai San Gai Yin Pian, so there are sixteen categories of wrongdoing, basically, that will cause you harm and sufferings. All right, and those are the things that we should avoid. We should remind ourselves. So the part six is the opposite of part five. Part five is about deceitful. That means behind the scene, shadowy. No one can see it in the face, in the surface. You, know, you do it behind people's back, you know, backstabbing stuff like that. This one is in your face. You know, like. You know, blatantly wrongdoing, like do it in 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 the open.、Um, in Chinese word, is gang chang is like very、uh, stubborn to a fault and、uh, un un unyielding、uh, for the wrong reason. All right,、uh, be careful that、like, not to mix up with positive qualities that also associate with stubborn and unyielding. This case is actually a wrongdoing,、uh, and still not how to say. Um, in in in、uh, do it so blatantly,、uh, without care and regard for others. It's not for the right reason, right? Still a wrongdoing, still a transgression. So on phrase twenty nine,、uh, the translation goes like this: 诚自作威，辱人求胜 So as you can see already, it's directly in your face. Abuse use of one's power, authority, and wealth. And then the second half is to insult and bully others in the hope of personal victory and gain. So those are those are actual, you know,、um, those are blatant, like you know, disrespect and 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 harm that done in the open.、Uh, first half talks about people with power, influence, and they use it to, you know,、um, push. Push people, bully people, uh, um, and to how to say do some underhanded deals、uh, for their own gains at the expense of the、uh, organizations, right? So now the question is, why would people do that? Now, why would people so blatant, so how to say, so shameless?、Uh, another word is called shameless, right? Able to do this in the open like that and without any regards of others. And without any regards of you know the consequences their action has onto other people, you know the in, the 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 effect 
of their selfishness on other people. Uh, it's it's very shameless. So why are people like that? You know, why why is people shameless? Um, you know, the opposite of this action is people who are who have a sense of humility, understanding of others and self, understanding of you know uh, compassion, kindness. They will not uh, use their power and position like that. That is just a waste because it's an opportunity to create merits, but instead of creating even more merits and virtues uh, uh, and, and improving virtues, it becomes, uh, you know, the, it was used to abuse, which means creating more uh, hatred against you, more, more um, negative result against you. So that is a foolish way uh, to use uh, those opportunity. Uh, instead of helping yourself to grow, it makes uh, it diminishes your merit. It diminishes your reputation. It diminishes um, your uh, uh, fortunes as well. So in Master Qigong, in this phrase, they has, he has brought out, you know, first thing we need to have is shame, a sense of shame. That means you will not do something that is uh, bringing, you know, terrible consequences, reputation-wise, uh, if you use or cultivation, we could say merits and fortunes, gong de, fu de, uh, to yourself and to your family. Um, because your action is not just, you know, done by yourself. It also affect people around you, your families, your friends, people who associate to you. There's a word in English called guilt by association. Although in, we might say, ah, it's not, it's a thing in the past. No, it doesn't matter what era you're in, what culture you're in. You associate with people who done this some one way or the other you will get how to say affected as well say if your friends or families is you know involved in bribery and corruptions and one might think may think you know how many of the 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 enjoyment that you have is gained from your father's or your mother's corruptions if they are in that position you will you will also need to bear part of the karma as well because you are actually enjoying it the ill-gotten gains. Unfortunately, you don't know it's ill-gotten gains. So that's even worse. Uh, in, in, in the Sutra, they, in Final Life Sutra, they have mentioned, um, uh, you know, the last uh, 30, 32nd to the 37th chapter, they already mentioned about how bad karma was created that caused un, un, uh, never-ending suffering. If you read the, the sutra, there's one phrase saying, uh, you know, uh, So basically, people, you know, harming each other, 然后作恶, 归己妻子, 极身作乐, so they did all these bad deeds only for their own enjoyment or their own family, wives, children's enjoyment. And those karma that you did, you know, those bad deeds that you did, corruptions, bullying, extortions, or uh, all sorts of, um, you know, misuse of power, and that ill-gotten gain that you used to your own enjoyment and your own family enjoyment, we need to repay it, not by yourself, but also by your family, because they also enjoyed it. Even though they know nothing, they will have to bear the karma. So that is foolish if you understand how it works. If people do that because they don't know how it works. Hmm. So in the um, Li Ji, the Book of Rights, basically R I T E, you know what is appropriate, or in 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 the more modern English, we can the Book of Decency, Li Ji. Uh, uh, it's a Confucius text. It says when you encounter wealth, do not um, allow that. Uh, Tiveryness that um, let's say do not allow yourself to even uh, to steal even one cent of it. You know that means if you have the opportunity towards wealth, make sure everything is clean. Make sure everything is properly game. You know take no not even one cent extra over others. All right, and the other one is when you encounter with difficulties. Uh, when you have encountered difficulties. Do not think that I'm lucky because just because I, I escaped from it. Always say that this, it takes one 
disaster to put me into a terrible position where I cannot recover. So always prepare yourself, you know, merit-wise, virtue-wise, you know, your cultivation skills. You need to be more steady, to, able to overcome your hatred, ignorance, and greed in face of temptations. You know, in my case, maybe a you know, beautiful woman or money or, you know, more more opportunity to, you know, use my power for the wrong things just because I like it. It's very dangerous. You don't know that part of you has it. You know, we can, we can point fingers at people outside and say, this is a bad guy, that is a bad guy, this is a dictator. You know, this person abused power. How would you be very sure that you wouldn't do the same thing if you're sitting in their position? It's very hard to say. If you're sitting in their position, in their background and environment, are you able to not walk into their path? Right? There are some extreme cases where most people won't, but I'm pretty sure we all have greed, hatred, ignorance. As long as we have these three weakness, right, that cause us to be, you know, trapped in six rims, we will commit these mistakes. Right? It's just a matter of time. Some people have better control. They might take one year, two, uh, they might take 10 years. Some people have no control. They will destroy themselves within one or two years. Some people, um, if they do not touch this kind of teachings, you know, in their own, it can be Bible, can be Quran, can be, you know, the Sutra, or for those who don't have uh, religious faith, they can also teach, you know, learn all those, you know, philosophies and teachings about cause and effect, you know, about, you know, the, the rise and fall of empires of history, you know, they will, there's more than enough to teach you, you know, the consequences of letting your gut down. So the whole point of the book of decency, Li Ji, Li Mao de Li, Ji de Ji. So this is a book of right, I-T-E, but in modern English, we use that word, it's, it's a bit like, what right? Uh, book of decency, how to be a decent person, how to, how to, how to, where do you draw the line, right? And these two phrases is the opposite of this one. People abuse their power, abuse their authority and wealth because they thought, you know, no one knows or I'm powerful. No one can stop me. The law cannot touch me. I have, they can sue me once, but I have 10 lawyers at my disposal. Maybe I'm a big company like, you know, some multi-billion dollar corporation. I can do nothing. I can do all I can do as long as I don't do it open. I can just, you know, use lawyer up and the law cannot touch me. The country cannot touch me. Politician cannot touch me. You know, judge cannot touch me. So I'm the king or I'm the god. That kind of arrogance. It, it happens. And, and it's very easy to think you are like that, you know. But there's always one thing one factor that you cannot change, you will die one day. And what comes up must go down. The, f the further you go up, the, further you, uh, the, the longer you will fall. The more painful, the more splintered you will once you fell into the ground. The more arrogance and the more less caring about you, or the more abusive you are, the more re the, the painful it is, the retribution back at you. It's very um, dangerous, right? Of course, as uh, we need to think about that. So when in high position, and if you remember, Mr. Liao Fan has mentioned a very good part in a, uh, chapter three. There's only four chapters. Liao Fan, uh, four lessons, talks about changing destiny. And in chapter three, he mentioned, when you have power, always think about you have no power. That makes you humble. When you have wealth, always think about you're poor. That makes you uh, be more cautious about your spending of money. When you have virtue, always think about you are lacking it so that you will want to cultivate more. Because you are not Buddha yet, you are not, you're not complete in terms of everything you cultivate. You could be very better, much better than average people, right? But until you attain Buddhahood, you cannot know for sure that one weakness you have inside of you might sprout and pull you down entirely. Just by our own cultivation in Pure Land School, we already know. It takes one thought of straying away from Amitofo at your very last breath to stop you from going to Pure Land. That's all it takes. One anger or one, uh, you know, uh, how to say, uh, not able to letting go your family or oh, my wife. What about my son? That's it. 
they're gone. You might be reborn as the in, uh, insect inside their ears or they are warm inside their stomach. It might sound ridiculous. I might talking about nonsense to some people, but it happens in the in the in the records. They did mention about you know someone thinking about his wife before he died. Uh, uh, maybe he didn't contact with uh, Amitofo, or even he he did. He might think about his wife more than Amitofo, and then end up becoming, you know, one of those creepy, uh, crawlies insects that stick very close to your um to his wife. And the monk who has attained the ability to see past and life also went to the house and you know give him blessings and stuff like that. And the monk said, "Don't uh, don't slap that um maybe uh, you know insect on your neck. That's your husband." And she's like, "What?" Uh, very surprised. And after that, they chant Amitofo to tell him, "Let go of your wife. Go to Pure Land. You know, staying here as an insect has not. It would do no good to you or you, your 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 loved ones." Go to Pure Land. Let, let all this go so that you can actually be helpful. Something like that, you know? Same goes for this. Yeah. When you face trouble or uh, disasters, you, you, you're you one inch away or one centimeter away. Uh, depends on which part of the world you came from. Uh, that near mist means that, you know, you need to be uh, more careful. And if you're grateful, I'll also be more careful. Like next time, you know, uh, I won't be this lucky. You can't say that, ah, it's fine. Next time, I'll still have the same luck. That's not rational, right? So always always have that sense of um, awareness, you know. That's why we call being aware. You know, have a sense of shame, you know, in a sense. So not it's not just on your wealth; it's also on your everything, your your position, your power, and everything. Um, once you have that opportunity in front of you, always think about: is this right? Is this part of the uh, uh, part of the um, agreement that are, that I will be getting? Is this the, the 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 game that I should be having? You know, if I do the job properly and I got rewarded properly, being open and transparent. You know, the bonus is being listed and everyone will have the same opportunities if they perform properly. Then you can get it without any, any um, you know, it's hard work, but you will get it with, with peace of mind. You know, instead of trying to put in some offshore account, hiding from, you know, governments, hiding from uh, 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 reinforcement, uh, enforce, enforcement agency, uh, because you want to get the extra 1 million, 2 million, only to end up maybe, you know, being... Uh, you know, taken away in other ways you know, through your own son. That is not good. The son that has um, or son of five, uh, the children, you know, maybe who has uh, who has no sense of um, taking care of the family, who just spend the money senselessly. Uh, that is rich. So I'm just, I'm just gonna spend money without thinking. Yeah. Like I say, you can take advantage of people one way, but remember, it's very fair. There, there will be some way you will lose it. The ill-gotten gain that you get will never be really be yours. You might enjoy it for one moment, but you also will lose it. Maybe you don't just lose one million that you that you have um, um that you have um not corrupted that you have uh, embellished. Yes. You, you won't just lose that 1 million that you embellish. You will lose 3 millions or 10 millions, 10 times of what you stole. There was always interest, compound interest, guys. Um, just to use the financial terms. All right. Uh, sorry for spinning circle. I mean, uh, uh, let's continue. So it's all about education. It's not saying that you shouldn't have power, you shouldn't have authority and wealth. If you're in that position, you know, you will one way or the other, came across this, you know, in different units. And when you have that kind of power, authority and wealth, which means people entrusted you, you know, a lot of responsibilities. Hence, they give you a lot more conveniences in a way uh, to do things. Hence, we call it authority, you know. But, you know, if, if you have a right mindset, you educate yourself or being educated with a right mindset, you will use it properly and you will not how to say, flash it out, show it off, spend it on meaningless stuff. Um, it's fine if you, you know, give yourself a bit of break, go and travel and have, buy some nice stuff. We're not saying that you shouldn't, but but instead of 
focusing on that part, you also know what is more important. You know, you know build up uh, schools or build up you know dharma place, or build up facilities where people can actually be benefited. Build up a trust for those you know disadvantaged kids uh, from a certain group that you came in contact with. You know, maybe certain disability group, certain disadvantaged group, uh, certain regions in the world that really need help. Those are very common as well. Um, if they do it earnestly, not using it as a front for for another sort of um, abuse of power and money. So remember, uh, a person who actually learn how to manage wealth, we understand that this wealth cannot be gotten without everyone's cooperation. So your wealth uh, need to be shared with everyone else, you know, in your capacity. You know, you can have your own nice property and stuff, but you also we realize that you will want to share with others, because there's no point just enjoying by yourself. You can have fun enjoying by yourself for three months, but everyone needs a companion, one way or the other. And if you share it with others, you know, willingly, of course in your capacity, then you will feel more fulfilled. And and this is how a lot of rich people really do. Um, and in turn, they will generate even more wealth in a sense, in the karmic sense, right? Um, yeah. So in the Chinese history, there's a person called Mr. Fan. I think I mentioned it last last time, uh, one month ago. Um, Mr. Fan is a very famous Song Dynasty politician, but he's before he's a politician, he's a he's scholar. He studied Confucius, like every single politician in Chinese court, ancient Chinese court. But he's the one who actually act and do it well, accord to the spirit of Confucius teaching. You know, benevolent, uh, righteous, kind, uh, rather than just by the letter. A lot of people learn by the letter, but then they, they, they didn't actually get the spirit of it because they might get corrupted or they might get pulled in the political dramas and their own greed and, and hatred came out and they lose their way. You know, their naive pureness they had back in their school, back in their early days as a young scholar, they lost that sense of um, ideal, uh, ideal Confucius scholar, and they become very, you know, worldly, too worldly. Uh, like, like what you see in the news, those people who maybe have a very good goal and aspiration, but when they get into the society and they get caught up in all these, you know, little things, uh, slowly corrupted and, and, and not able to maintain their integrity, they lose their way and they become one of those who abuse power, authority and wealth and thinking is correct. This happens, you know. Um, but it's better than not even knowing about what is right. You know, those people who know what is right and still do wrong, obviously um, it's not forgivable. Uh, it will be punished by, you know, either human laws or karmic consequences but it, in terms of proportion and percentage right the the chances of people doing the right thing will be more if they are exposed to the teaching of this you know those teaching that you know you, you, you how do you properly get the wealth how do you properly manage your power how do you properly be a person how to be a good person decent person first before you you know do your job you know you have to be a decent person before you do your job properly so this mr fun has a trust basically he spread his own wealth to, to, to everyone else in his hometown you know in china and he built house built schools built roads built bridge um constantly you know have the food relief you know especially when that has to happen he put even more money into it he always makes sure that you know his roots are taken care of because he he, his hometown, you know, is what raised him. It takes a village to raise a kid. I think we heard of it before. Um, I think same thing, you know, it takes a village to raise a kid. Uh, and, and he always remembered his roots and he's repaying them like that. And he himself lived in a very frugal and very um, austere lifestyle, you know. Not saying that we should 100% be very austere. I mean, it's depending on each other's choice, but always set aside a certain funds if you already have the ability to help others because they too will struggle and if you can 
in in this position and authority doing that in the very least this is a meritorious thing obviously don't do it with the thought of i want to get merits but this is how people grow merits preserve their wealth you know you don't preserve your wealth by hiding it putting it over a zurich account in switzerland those things do not last it takes a few change of policy you know for government to check and then they will confiscate your money because you didn't pay tax instead if you do it properly right you will re- you will you will you you'd use the money to people who actually need it and that merit will be passed it will convert into merit because you actually helping people and people you know normal people most people are you know have have a are grateful they might not be grateful now they will be grateful in future when it actually helps them uh, uh, they might not know but you know coming is works like that you know it will it will it will come back to us one day so we saw what we read what we saw and it will also come back to your family so i'm talking about a positive scenario against this uh, transgression uh, so yeah so that's why his family for 800 years since the song dynasty ended so song dynasty only lasts for what 200 300 one 200 300 no less no more than 300 but his family is still maintaining his wealth and position in different dynasties after the song in mongolians in in the yuan in the in the ming and the qing so it, t- it takes 800 years for them to enjoy their wealth and and uh, uh good reputation you know so this is amazing confucius family enjoy five thousand years wait five thousand years two three thousand years uh of respect wealth well, well not very wealthy but comfort respect from each government no matter who takes the throne in china everyone will first if you want to be emperor of china you need to pray a uh, a uh, uh, or straight to the Confucius statue because he's the spirit of China. He represents the spirit of uh, uh, conscience uh, amongst the Chinese uh, elites, educations. And the family, the descendants of Confucius will be granted a position, a nominal position. It's not a real position, but a nominal position in the court and be given a fixed amount of salary in the in the form of rice maybe they would just give them you know a certain uh, a location of salary for every dynasty until the end of you know the last imperial dynasty in china qing dynasty so how long is that from unification of china and confucius happens before so minus the the the, the very beginning one the unification of china the the qing dynasty the qin the, the qing the rest of them you know especially those big empire like Tang Dynasty and all that, they would, they would always pay respect to Confucius and his descendants. And his descendants, in order to maintain the name of his family, they will all have to learn harder than normal people of their own ancestors, Confucius teaching, you know, to be a good person, to be benevolent. They need to be an example. Because in some sense, they represent their, there's a brand there, right? This time we can recognize, like in, even in modern world, you know, you have a brand, Coca-Cola or something, you need to maintain that quality, right? You need to maintain that integrity, you know, that professionalism. Same goes for Confucius family. They need to maintain their brand as the Confucius descendant. That means they need to work hard. They need to really drill that teaching in them and not just in the face. They actually need to embody it. So... And also, I'm pretty sure people who can born in that family more or less have that affinity. That means it won't be too bad. It can't be too bad. Even there's a rotten apple, it would be an exception rather than rule. Because of everything was so well, how to say, structured. And the government is also very respectful of this. So it will last for about two, three thousand years, 70 generations in the book until today as well but the, the the prestige they enjoy for 70 generations all right until the end of Qing dynasty so in the beginning of the modern you know nationalist that that that, that won't happen anymore so this is why i mean like 
there is a way to preserve your power, authority, and wealth. And it's not by bullying people, you know, conquering people. Those things cannot last. What lasts is your role model, you know, your, you know, your example. Your example. You help people. You actually care about people, and and, and you improve yourself. So yeah, the root of a um, fortune merits, right, is being respectful towards people, towards your you know goods, the things that you're using. You know you do not waste it. That's how you respect the thing that you're using. People, you treat them with you know the dignity that deserved or even if for terror uh, uh, people who are hard to deal with you maintain that dignity by not stooping down to their level or stooping down to that level of you know um uh, uh of, of of losing your control that's why when we you know when i ask question to venerable uh um wooding yesterday right because of the righteous anger, you know, like, you know, what if the anger can be used for the, because when Wooling was talking about rage and it, how is it, how is not helping us? Uh, how is a pandemic in our society? You say COVID is a pandemic, rage is a pandemic as well. Um, and I was asking about that and she's like, um, even righteous anger is not, it's still anger and it's still not, um, it's not uh, uh, what you want because it will, be very dangerous, hard to control. It might turn into something terrible because it is an anger. It's not a pure energy. It's an energy that is like nuclear, it can erupt and hurt and corrupt. So always need to, um, you know, maintain dignity inside by, you know, not lying to yourself. If you do something wrong, be upfront, upfront about it. You know, face. You know, I understand we have to, some sort of reputation to maintain. This reputation is useless if it's not real. If your reputation is based on the false perception or lies, it's like building a castle using sand. You will fall one day very easily. If you want a solid reputation, you know you don't do it by just blindly protecting your face. That's stupid. That's that's not stupid. That's that's unwise. Uh, that, you have to build it on real character, real virtue. And you can't be perfect in one goal because you're not a sage. I'm not a sage. You need to be con you need to be honest about your weakness. You need to be open up. And you need to really able to stomach humiliations and and, and, and sometimes unreasonable demands or unreasonable situations. Sometimes unexplainable difficulties, you know might cause by past life, but you can't think too much because you have no access to that kind of information. So you need to take it in and able to use this teaching as your cushion, you know, to process it. You might not understand everything, not even this life. You know, you might not have a chance to know why, but you need, you understand everything happens for a reason. And if I able to be a dignified person, that means I will able to over Come my own difficulties, be honest about my weakness, um, be open about my shortcomings, right? Um, able to uh, uh, have a right kind of mindset, dealing with uh, my uh, dealing with conflicts, with issues, uh, reducing that sort of um, uh, conf uh, conflict insight. You know, not 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 one upping one another. Then only then you have a how to say broader uh, path to tread on, to walk on, because you are, how to say, you have nothing else to hide, you know, there's no need to hide from anything. You understand your weakness, you let everyone see your weakness. At the same time, you understand your strength. You understand that I can do it much better than this. Um, and, and it's hard sometimes, that's why you need friends, that's why you need Dharma place. That's why you need teachers, because sometimes you can't see your own fault. Sometimes you might act like that, and then people are like, "Mate, that's not right," and and you might be like, "What?" And then you need to have that sense of rational, you know, hard driving behind behind your mind. You have to you need to be like, "Okay, no, 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 no. 
he might be correct. You know, I need to see if I'm actually like that. If you're not like that, people defame you. There's nothing for you to worry about. Right? You understand perfectly that you're not like that. And of course, you're still getting defamed. People might, you know, push down on you and put some false rumors. And that's when you were tested. That's why it's very important to have this kind of stillness in your life. Otherwise, um, the opposite might happen. You might go vengeance mode, you know, angry and hate, hate, hate. And even you might not committing this mistake that they claim you are because of your vengeance, you might end up actually doing the same thing. That means you're stooping yourself down to their level and you become the person that you don't want to be because you can't control your angry anger. So be very careful about this. And, and, and the, the only way you can do that is, you know, other than cultivating Chan Amitofo, just immerse in this teaching. It, it has to be done daily. And uh, I, I like to admit that I haven't done enough. Uh, uh, this, is, this is something you need to like remind yourself. That's why Master Ching Kong do that for 60 years, nonstop. He's not doing that just to show off his speech or anything. He's only, he only has one thought in his mind. Right? If I don't do that, I'll get lazy. If I get lazy, all sorts of rubbish coming out from my mind. Because we are programmed in the very beginning. Because of our previous action in the past life, we used to wandering thoughts. That's why we're still here. We're not in pure land. We're stuck in that mode. So if you don't push yourself to get in contact, to immerse, because you need to understand what you're talking about before you share with others. If you're not forcing yourself like, like you know, to be in contact with the you know, same sages teaching, people who understand how to get out of this, then you will allow your rubbish to come out. That's what Master Jikong was thinking. I need to talk about the sutra every day to save myself. Uh, and whether if it benefits you, that's a very beautiful side effect. For him, it's a way to save himself out of the, um, you know, out of that trap, the subconscious trap that we have. You know, subconsciously we give rise to greed. Subconsciously we're angry at people, annoyed, uh, not maybe not hate, annoyed, angry, and it will build up into hate, greed as well. So I like this. I love this. I really cannot live without this. Oh my God, I like this. And then you become, you know, crave, crave, crave more, more. Some people are living in comfort and even they have the, all the comfort. They still have, don't have enough. They want bigger house, bigger cars, you know, demanding more of their partners, demanding more of their uh, family, even though they're already in a very wealthy position. That's what abuse, use of power came from. Never ending. Because they lost. Why are they doing this? They're just enjoying the... The, the, the excitement of getting another zero to their bank account, another digit to their bank account. Oh, one million becomes 10 billion. But you only have a, you only have like what, six, seven feet height. Uh, uh, and, 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 and this, that's all you need. And what you want is endless. What you need is this much. What you want is endless. So the second half is to insult and bully others in the hope of personal victory and gain. Same, stepping on other people in order to get, you know, in order to get advantage in your, um, in your, in your, uh, you know, maybe in, in your, in your, Reputation, you know, say you might uh, insult your uh, seniors or insult the boss or insult, um, you know, people who are uh, reputed, uh, who actually are, you know, well respected, just so that you might appear high and mighty. You know, you see, I can insult these uh, important people. So I'm very good. You know, I'm very uh, high and mighty. You know, yes, if they do something wrong, constructive criticism or proper criticism with thoughts given to it is correct. That's fair. You know, because the but always but be careful though. If you do it for just to get to them, that's become a vendetta. Normally you would just point out the point 
point out the matters at hand and you will say this might not be correct because A, B, C. That's fine. Let's call civility, civil argument, civil discussion. But this one is not. This one is senseless discussion, senseless insult. You know, you might twisting the facts, twisting the narrative, um, you know, p- uh, bringing out more people, you know, from the cr- uh, public, you know, the army of public opinion, basically, you know, because most people don't, to be honest, you know, how many people put thoughts into the words, the information they have received? You know, most people will like switch on the automatic mode. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is good. They didn't give thoughts to it. That's fair because you have you only have so much energy. You only have so much time. You can spend everything in this. But, you know, be very careful. You know, don't be used. Don't, don't become one of those chest by people with ill intention to harm others. Um, back to the point, ruren So insult and bully others in order to get some sort of glory. Uh, it's uh, it's another uh, you know transgression uh, that is um, blatant. I'll find the right word, English word, but um, these are well, just for now. We just use the word blatant. Right. So wow, another way we can see this is why would people want to do that? You know stepping on each other in order to get to the top that's the mindset of competition and people say competition spurs growth you know, spurs performance you know spurs excellence you have to think about competition in this context as something uh double edged sword yes it spurs growth excellence innovation but it also if it it was directed in the very cutthroat manner it becomes one of those um, bottom mind mentality. Everyone's trying to race to get more numbers to their performance. You know? So the result, including our elections and stuff like that, it becomes one of those try to dig someone else, uh, you know, personal news in order to get an upper hand in your elections. It becomes, you know, it becomes dirty and the whole environment becomes distrustful, you know, and and even though you achieve result, maybe winning a certain race, elections, or uh, uh, some sort of a, a, a monetary gain, some sort of glory, you know, praise, um, at the expense, you know, of you know creating a very bad cycle uh, in the society, in the in the group, everyone think it's okay to step on each other and this kind of mindset is dangerous because what uh, needs to be done is everyone should try to better compete to better this group rather than you know against each other for personal glory and gain Um, and that's why it's not um, it shouldn't be something we should um, yeah, I, I think I, I, I say all I have to say about this. Uh, yeah. To be honest, the former group, Master Shinko mentioned about Liu He Jing. Uh, this is actually from you know, Buddha, I think. And Liu He Jing means the six harmonious uh, principle. To be harmonious, to be a very successful winning team, A team, right? You don't do that by having a cutthroat mentality yeah big company do shortcut in product of course they might get the short-term incentive boost in their product uh, sales long term if it will come out paper cannot cover fire that's a direct translation from chinese uh, idioms you cannot hide uh, the truth so if if instead of having that sort of like cultural environment People just get money for the sake of money. Like 2008, financial crisis. Where did they come from? Everyone's just trying to get that number in their in their race to the bottom, you know, to get as much money as possible. Doesn't matter who they borrow the money to. Doesn't matter if it makes sense. As long as they get clients in, even the homeless people, give them a 500K loan and then tell them to, you know, 
borrow the money, the bank will allow you to do that. Artificially boost the number. In the end, causing even more harm to the whole economy. Right? That's how, that's how, that's what competition is in essence. Now, what should be happening is, it should be um, uh, something more deeper, like culture, like the mindset of, you know, I don't do this for myself. I need to uh, better the society by, you know, bringing out the ideas and stuff like that. It, it cannot be raising to the bottom. That's why the mindset has to be correct. First thing, the, the, the target has to be correct. It has to be, you know, trying to find a way to improve uh, the, 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 um, the capacity, the competency, the quality of your service products. Um, and even though you are money profit driven, it cannot override your responsibility as a human being uh, towards a society. So that kind of mindset has to be there. So Master Ching Kong reintroduced this mindset, six harmonious deeds, six harmonious principle. To form an A team, a team that is successful, first thing is you need to have that mindset of winning together. Or, you know, we need to make sure that we do not win at the expense of everything around us. Because the real wealth, the real opportunity comes when ev everyone is well off. You can't be well off when everything around you is miserable. That's very, very logical and very reasonable. If everyone is starving to death and you walk around with a Rolex driving a Lexus car, you know, limited edition, and going down with your, you know, Gucci bag and wearing some sort of Italian leather shoes, uh, walking into that high-end restaurant, French Revolution is going to happen again. Uh, that's how French Revolution happens. Uh, don't do that. You know, you can't win forever. You know, no one can win forever. What if you finish your your glory? We have a, a time limit. What happens after that? You're gonna get, you know, pulled down and get Caesar Caesar, you know, Caesar stabbed. So that's that's short mind, short mindedness. What should be happening is you create an environment where everyone understands. You can't win if unless everyone is relatively well off. You know, they might not be super rich, which is not real, realistic, but in the very least, everyone is not starving, not poor, not like unable to access help. You know, even if they are not as affluent or wealthy, they are able to find places, stuff to help them. And that has to be supported by the society. So as a company, a country, a company, a family, same thing. It has to be, um, everyone should compete for the betterment of the company rather than their own gain. And only then you have a very healthy kind of a organization. Uh, they have the same mindset. They have the same bottom line. They argue for the sake of, you know, the, the organization they're in charge. You know, they argue for the betterment of it. And, 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 um, and this is the opposite of this one. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> all right. So five minutes left. Um, we'll go in deep depth of this. Just have a, you know, first look. To cause another crops and orchards to fail, fail to reasonably aid agricultural production when able. To be honest, this translation, yeah. 拜仁鸟撞破人婚姻 uh, the second one is cause destruction or break up of another marriage or engagement. Uh, okay, yeah. So, not so nice, you know, by the Miao Zhuang. So, a simpler way to say is, you know, stop society corruption. Melina, that's a big question. How do we stop society corruption? Any ideas, Auntie Yanzi? Any ideas how to stop society's corruption? What is society corruption? First, we need to understand. What do you think? What is society's corruption, Auntie? Or Melinda, you can say. We can look at society as like 
you know, it was formed by people, right? And in every people organization, doesn't matter how we claim to be egalitarian, there's got to be a leader. Like you say, it triggers down because um, the breakup of some sort of um, mentality. So in six harmonies principle, um, we talk about number one is the hardest. Once you get number one right, the other five falls in place. It will, it will, it will work. The first one is about uh, having a right understanding. You know, 建和同解. your ideas, your views, you know, may not be identical. It can be different, variety, diverse, but it has to base on the right, you know, organ, a family is to have a happiness, right? Between you and your husband or you and your wife and, and then your children, you know, that's number one. It's the point of having a family is to get through this life together happily. What's the point of forming a company to win together? To, to build some sort of uh, organization that can harness more resources and build profits, and that profits will be shared among the the uh, in form of wages, in form of taxes. And then, what's the benefit of? I mean, what's the point of having countries, uh, a nation, so that they, everyone can group together in that region? Because we're bound by physical limitations, right? We can't just fly. We need airplanes and all that. But okay, sorry. So. To, to have the sense of, um, you know, community so we can help each other, you know, and, you know, to defend each other when, you know, elements of nature uh, or elements of, you know, invasions comes in. You can help each other, protect each other. So this is, this is the right understanding that sounds very common sense, but sometimes it's lost in translation when it goes to day to day. Uh, when things go well, people like, it, like, like what the Book of Decency in Confucius teaching said, when things go well, you forgot how it was when things were tough. And then, and then everyone become more and more narrow minded, selfish, only, uh, you know, worry about how many zeros I get in my accounts, uh, instead of actually connecting to their family, connecting to their, uh, siblings, connecting to their communities, see what's going on. You know, everyone's got obsessed with how do I look good on my IG? How do I look on my um, you know, profile? You know, how to appear happy instead of actually being happy. Um, uh, and, and this goes to everywhere. You know, from, 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 of course, we can't just say, oh, it's, it's the president's fault or it's the, it's the, you know, the, the boss fault. That's, he's also product of his generation from that kind of mentality. Um, the other way of saying is the negligence of reiterating common sense is what happens you know everyone to focus on technical understanding education trying to get that uh, you know extra marks to get to pass and forgetting the whole point of education is to enlighten your mind to this is education what we're looking at now those are those are telling you do not do this because it has no good what is not good what is good those are education what is the benefit what is the harm of doing this Instead of stuck in that kind of mindset, you know, uh, stabbing each other in order to get to the top, there is other way to get there. You know, that you don't have to do this in order to have a good life. There are many ways you can have a good life. Uh, and how you manage your relationship with each other as a human is the first step. And, and then you expand to your, you know, animals, and then you extend to your environment. But it always starts with human to human. Um, and what, what you mentioned about corruption on, in society, I agree it's because of lacking that um, consensus. There's no more consensus. What consensus? What even is consensus? I would say the, the common consensus now might just be, you know, I just want to get more money, enjoy. But how can you enjoy when everything around you is falling apart? Right? How you... Imagine your Yellowstone Park in US, if everyone just don't care about it, throwing rubbish, de defiling all the monuments or uh, 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 yeah, the natures, there's no more Yellowstone National Park for you to enjoy. There's no more beauty for you to enjoy because everything was very ruined. Um, so that, that kind of, you know, education needs to come back. We're not saying that we shouldn't study math and science and all that. Those are technical stuff to, to serve you. Not the other way around. You don't just study just to get money. 
Remember, money is your tool, not your goal. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be used by money. You should use the money for happiness. So what is happiness? Right? Having three Lamborghinis happiness? That means three times the upkeep, three times the worry, three times the security? No. Having the money and able to use it in the right way. You can invest it. You can use it and share it with your family. First step. And then you can share it with the communities. Build up infrastructure. Build up, you know, build up the uh, uh, space, uh, tools uh, that can be better using the knowledge you learn. But before all this technical education, Confucius didn't say no. He said that you need to start with moral education. What is moral education? Right? People might group it in religion. No, we don't. We cannot group it in that mindset. Moral education just simply means how people and people work with each other, relationship with the people, with between between people. In Chinese, it is called lun li. Lun li means the the relationship between people. If you can manage well, because people and people, when they work together, it can be very powerful. And if you use the word competition in the right way, you know, competition between the real gentlemen is not about their own personal glories. I am better. You know, you are terrible stuff. It's more about, with all due respect, sir, I think this might not work because of ABCD. I think we should do A, B, C, uh, EFG in addition to ABCD and the other person like, thank you, please be honest. Um, I really need more input to this proposal. How can I do better? That kind of society is what we want. That's how you work in an organization. That's how a good organization wins by being honest and open while still respectful and have dignity with each other. Right. And that is totally again, uh, totally in opposite of what um, tai Sang Kai Yinping trying to warn us not to do, right? The opposite of abusive use of power, the opposite of insult is to wise, be wise in use of power, authority, influence, and to, you know, be respectful and honest in, in a way. Yeah. So that's a balance, basically. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we can't prevent, we can't say saving. It, to be honest, it's we are far gone in a way, but it's not, it's, it, it's sad, but at the same time, it also warns us to, you know, work hard in our cultivation, go to Pure Land earlier. Because, you know, how did Pure Land becomes Pure Land? Sorry, I'm, I'm taking a liberty of a few more minutes to uh, wrap this up. Why is Pure Land Pure Land? You know, is Pure Land just magically come out of thin air without any reason? No. Buddhism is always based on reason. And Reason is based on wisdom. Wisdom is based on pure observation, understanding. And, 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 and for pure land, the only matters, differences, is their use of heart and time. We are, our time frame is short. So, you know, people z- reach their peak at around 40 years old. But for Buddha's time, because of their merit and fortunes they have accumulated, they have infinite, or they have billions of kalpas, millions of years. Something we cannot imagine, but plausible. So basically, back to the point: Why is pure land pure land? Why is our Saha world, which is the world of uh, suffering and you know a lot of uh, unwholesome things happening, why is their world pure land? Why is our world full of dirt and mess? Because of the use of heart. Everyone educate each other. They have a different features. You know, they might all look the same. They have their own merits as well but they all merge together perfectly because they all have the common ground. And that common ground is, you know, they want to, they have a compassion heart. They will really help each other. They really uh, have no differentiation, no discrimination. They have no, um, you know, uh, they do not wonder ring thoughts. Even their wandering thoughts is well, uh, skillfully directed towards enlightenment. Right. This is because of the vow of Amitabha Buddha. And Amitabha Buddha cannot achieve this level of skillfulness without observing. And he does not just observe one, two, ten millions. He observes endless millions and millions of world, of many Buddhas' world, because there are many Buddhas, right? And they observe different modes of living, 
in a different uh, Buddha's world, Buddha, Buddha's pure land. And he pick what is good and what is not good. And he, he reject what is not good. You know, what is the cause of three lower realms? What is the cause of three uh, higher realms? You know, the heaven, the human, the asura, maybe not the asura, the human and the heaven realm. What is the cause of people falling into animal assistance, uh, ghosts, hungry ghost assistance or hell? It's all because of this heart. And and, and and he observed that for a long time, in the Sutra, five Kaupas, to get to where he is, starting to build Pure Land. And that is why you only need, you have to be committed to go to Pure Land and chant Amitabha, not just anyone can go there. Because that is a world of vow, not karma. I mean, not karma, not, um, not passively, uh, they are all using the law of karma, but he used it so well that only people with vow to born to pure land and able to chant Amitabha in the last moment, able to go there. And people who, you know, are unsure, but they still steadfast in their recitation of Amitabha, able to go to the border of the pure land, but they technically they are in there. That's called Bian Di Yichen in Chinese. Uh, one one day we'll talk about that. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is, you know. Why Pure Land is Pure Land? Because he accept only people who, who really have the same idea. And the very bottom line, they are willing to go to Pure Land, willing to accept for the eight vows of Amitabha. Some people might not even know, you know, the uncles and aunties who have no knowledge of Amitabha's vow. They only heard Amitabha. And they, I'm pretty sure because of the past life, they accept it. Some people who are well educated, they still can't accept it. Why this? Why that? which is perfectly fine if they eventually ease into it. But what I'm trying to say is that's why Pure Land is Pure Land. Everyone has a common ground. In the very bottom line, they accept the 48 vows. They accept that, you know, uh, Buddha, uh, everyone can be a Buddha. They accept that um, there's no discrimination. Uh, there's no uh, um, attachment. So the attachment and discrimination need to be let go. They might not be able to do it on their own, but by chanting Amitabha for earnestly, they're able to do that because of the vow, the promise made by Buddha, Amitabha Buddha. So back to our world, we can be inspired in some way in our world. We might not be able to do that in large scales, but in our little own space, you know, if you have the right conditions and if your heart is true and you have the right position and power and influence, try your best build up consensus, build up common sense. Yeah. This common sense is, um, is not new. It's, it's, the truth is, shouldn't be something new. It should be something eternal, something that can be applied no matter which era you're in, which planet you're in, which uh, civilization you're in, which culture you're in. You know? That truth is, you know, being respectful to one another, being loving and kind to one another, or begets a more loving and kind and tolerant society. You know, having a more caring mindset means that you also take care of yourself, you also kind of protect yourself, but at the same time, you expand your scope to this organization. You want to better this organization, better this country. You know, that should be the consensus. And then we can talk about everything else, the technicalities, the, the agreements, disagreements, because everyone has the right mindset, like family between husband and wife. I really want this relationship to work. And then you talk about, maybe you should wash more dishes. Maybe you should, you should do, do more laundry. Maybe we should talk more about, you know, how we speak. Uh, they might argue, they might you know, bicker, but in the end of the day, they want this relationship to work. They want their children to be happy. Because I've seen some family, maybe of the past life grievances, after they married, they just, 180 degree change and that person becomes vicious demanding more and more and that person came from a rich family from a family where he she he or she would never need to worry about earning income all he need or she needs is to ask money from daddy or mommy and and their life is like as a middle upper class it's very comfortable but asking for more and more and more and more you know that's that's lacking consensus. 
one side wants to build a relationship, the other side just want to you know, have fun, you know, bye bye, we have a good time, bye. How can this work? Right? Sometimes it's you do your best, it might not work, but you might do it in a very uh, loving and civil way, it's fine. But more, more often, people don't give enough, uh, people without right consensus in the beginning haven't figured out whether they have a common ground and they fall into that relationship. There you go. All right. So from family, you know, this happens. And, and, and organization, the people you recruit, you know, you must see, you know, test. You can't control every entry, but you're able to observe, right? You observe for a long time, see if that person actually has the right mindset. Are they the kind of person who just do the job and drop it? Or are the person who actually care about quality? They might not be skillful, they might not be well-educated, but they are spirit is correct. I think there's a saying very famous. Um, he's confused, but he's got the spirit. You know, he might not say the right word, do, uh, give the right expression, but he or she really wants to be contributing to this society or organization. You got the right person. Because all these other skill stuff, you can train them, but you can't have their mindset. You can just ask them to have the mindset to contribute. They need to have that on their own. Same goes to Pure Land. You need to have the mindset to go to Pure Land. Buddha cannot say, you must go to Pure Land. You can't. They can't force you. This is your own choice. Only when you make the choice, then they say, okay, here's Amitofo. Here's the Sutra. You can chant the Sutra. Or you can't focus, Dylan. Okay, now try something else. Talk more about Taishan Gain Pen. Learn about this so that you can be more, fe- uh, be more aware of the reality of the world so that you don't get stuck into beautiful girls or beautiful music and stuff and you'll be able to go to Pure Land. Something like that, you know, you need to have that heart, right? All right, I, uh, I go overboard, but I hope it helps in uh, whatever you are, wherever you are, um, to build a more uh, hopeful and beautiful outlook in your life. You know, even between yourself, guys, you need to have consensus with yourself. Trust me, I've been one of those people who fight with myself a lot. It's painful. <laughs> Yeah, struggle. Yeah. All right. Okay. Talk about this next time. Um, pretty sure the concept is there. We kind of get it. Um, we'll continue next week, Monday as usual. I'll be in Brisbane with my family. Uh, I'm currently in Sydney, which is south. Going back to the north, Sydney, uh, Brisbane. Um, Time-wise, we'll stick to 8 o'clock because there's no time difference. Uh, if there's any issues, I can't make it or anything, I'll be uh, informing uh, everyone first, uh, until the end of us. We might rearrange somewhere in a week, but I will do my best to stick to Monday every week, 8 p.m. Thank you so much. Uh, let's dedicate our merit. If you have any questions, uh, everyone here, uh, Auntie, uh, Melinda or who, whoever is watching on live, uh, please ask where you are, wherever you are on the live chat or uh, on if you're in, already in our youth group, you can ask in the youth group or one-to-one to me. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, let's do the dedication of merit. May the merits and virtues Adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teachings for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitabha. Let's chant our 10 times Amitofo. 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 Amitofo.
佛，阿弥陀佛。All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. See ya. Bye bye.